Well, the GST Council continues to be in a huddle currently. The meeting is the first after Prime Minister promised a simpler GST regime and went on to say that 99% of items will soon be under the 18% tax slab or even below that. Sources tell CNBC TV 18 that the Council may discuss composition scheme for real estate in this meeting. We also caught up with the Finance Minister of Kerala, Thomas Isaac. He believes that the cement rate reduction uh, is unlikely to happen in this meeting because that was not part of the agenda items. Take a listen. There are not many big proposals for rate reduction. Uh, it's only tweaking of the rates and rationalization. That's what I understand from the, um, from the agenda notes. But um, there is a serious proposal regarding reducing the bus contract service tax um, to a lower limit without ITC, which uh, I do not know what is the revenue implication. Uh, one has to carefully look at it to ensure that it is revenue neutral, the change proposed. Otherwise, it's a routine um, uh, clarifications and so on. Large number of uh, 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 appeals have come and the GST Council will be uh, approving the clarifications that are given by CBCI and so on. Is there a reduction in the prices of the GST on 7 2, sir? Um, no. No. दरों का एकीकरण करने का प्रयास यह शुरू से ही हमारा जीएसटी काउंसिल का एक लक्ष्य रहा है और उसी दिशा में भारत के प्रधानमंत्री जी भी यही चाहते हैं कि जीएसटी की दरें वह 18 प्रतिशत के आसपास हो अधिकतम जो जीएसटी के दायरे में आने वाली सेवा और वस्तुएं हैं वह 28 प्रतिशत में अब न्यूनतम जो मिनिमम है वही केवल रहे तो अच्छा है तो जीएसटी काउंसिल इस भावना को भी ध्यान में रखते हुए और देश और प्रदेश के सभी जो प्रतिनिधि हैं वह है जनता के हित में दलगत राजनीति से ऊपर उठ करके हम फैसला करने वाले हैं well, the finance ministers there of UP and Kerala on what is likely to be taken up by the GST Council today. Joining us, uh, tax expert Rohan Shah, uh, Pratik Jain of PwC. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us here and spending another Saturday uh, with us here at CNBC TV 18 discussing uh, what the GST Council may take up. Mr. Shah, let me start by asking you, uh, because two specific agenda items that, uh, that will be taken up by the Council today probably already have been discussed and deliberated upon, as uh, was pointed out by the Kerala Finance Finance Minister, the works contract, uh, the service tax reduction there, uh, but without uh, ITC. Uh, what do you make of that and what could be the implications? Uh, to my mind, Shireen, uh, you know, two things I picked up. One was the works contract and you mentioned something in relation to real estate. Uh, now, in terms of works contract, I think the, the problems have been firstly, you know, how they define a works contract and how they actually administer it. And we've seen several advanced rulings where uh, qualitatively, I think the view which has been taken does not adhere to what is the normal understanding of industry. So quite clearly, you were getting into tax positions which were much more onerous for industry. Uh, the situation of trying to rationalize tax, but denying ITC, uh, again, to me, that's not a very popular uh, approach that should really yeah. be taken up again. You've done it in, you know, the food and beverage industry. It not it has had results mm. which are not very good at all. Because what, what seems to happen is the moment you sort of say lower tax, but I burn out your credit, you get into this situation of economics mm. not being defined. Because in many industries, you either have transitional credit you will lose or you have ongoing credit you will lose. And therefore, the reduction in tax is actually more than offset by the disadvantage on credit. Now, the moment you reduce tax, of course, yeah. typically you're going to start an anti-profiteering uh, sort of scrutiny because your expectation is that this yeah. industry should pass on. Uh, in works contract, that's going to be even more complex uh, because, you know, you have series of inputs which go into this uh, where some of those may have got costlier just through economic factors or even through, you know, issues of tax rate uh, increase. So to my mind, if they're going to make the reduction, it's welcome. 
but the moment you tie it into a itc mm. den uh, denial or a burnout you are creating complications mm. uh, which a actually sometimes yeah. you don't get tax benefit but you almost certainly create scrutiny anti profiteering and a host of other issues Absolutely, and you're right to point out that this uh, has, in fact, been an issue that the uh, uh, restaurant business, the hospitality business, has also been uh, uh, sort of raising with the government. Uh, uh, but uh, Pratik, you know, on the issue of the real estate sector and what we heard there from uh, uh, Thomas Isaac, a composition scheme for real estate, what do you make of that and what could be the implications? No, Shri, I don't think it makes any sense, actually. Uh, see, if you if you have this attitude that any sector which is facing any any sort of issues under GST, you break the credit chain and give them an option of composition, you're you're base, basically breaking the the fundamental sort of concepts of GST. And real estate is a sector we all know that uh, you know a, a large component of real estate is still in cash, right? So, if you restrict the input credit, that would mean that. I am incentivized to buy in cash because I don't get an offset of the taxes that I pay on my inputs, and uh, which is which is not a good idea. I mean, most of the organized players uh, have now adjusted uh, with this uh, credit system and with a full rate of twelve uh, percent. If you want, you can reduce the rate of twelve hmm. uh, a little further. But yeah. So. Uh yeah, essentially you're saying that that's not a good idea. But let me also bring in MS Money of Deloitte and Uday Pimprikar of EY. Money, uh, uh, Pratik was just pointing out that this business of composition, uh, which is now being considered for the real estate sector, may not necessarily be a good idea. Your quick take on that. Uh, I agree with Pratik. And, you know, to my mind, there are several other issues which need to be taken up right now. The most significant of them being the fact that compliance continues to be very difficult for SMEs, and the SME sector mm. is really facing mm. a big, big challenge. Uh, when we talk of SME sector, we need mm. to bear in mind that the SME sector, to a very large extent, uh, is, uh, is engaged in B2B business. It's not engaged in B2C business. So if SMEs are affected, large businesses are also in turn affected. Uh, we have recently come across right. a few issues of the credit being blocked for various companies, including SMEs. Hmm. So I would say that at a broad level, there are several issues which need to be addressed at this stage, uh, primarily from the perspective right. of making compliance simpler, having the administration geared yeah. up to deal with SMEs, and possibly a lot of focus should go hmm. on all of those issues in this meeting. Okay, so you're saying that they need to prioritize compliance-related issues and not go down this road of composition for real estate, etc. But that, we understand, is one of the agenda items. But uh, let me also bring in Uday into the conversation. Uday, you know, a lot of pending sort of uh, work left over from previous council meetings. A lot of group of ministers were set up, but there has been no... Uh, sort of uh, outcome of uh, those ministerial panels that have been set up, whether it has to do with the possibility of assess or it even has to do with compliance-related issues. Are you disappointed, uh, Uday, that there hasn't been any forward movement, even though there have been these select panels that have been set up within the council? I think uh, let's look at the reality and, and, and the way things are going to proceed over the next maybe uh, five, six months. Uh, uh, there is some amount of work to be done by these panels and, uh, and whether it will quickly trigger off any action is also going to get dependent equally on, uh, on the revenue implications of whatever they do. As of now, uh, the, mm. From a revenue perspective, uh, there is still a gap that uh, the government is looking at. And that constrains them uh, yeah. to some extent uh, of taking uh, decisions. I think that, that is a problem. Uh, on, the, on, mm. on, on a different level, since we're talking about rates uh, earlier, uh, is it a good decision to go ahead and prune the overall slabs and, and reduce the overall taxation mm. from from 28 to 18 in some of these, or for this particular matter about uh, handling re real estate sector slightly more sensitively than what uh, what uh, may have been done earlier. I mean, there is a there are there are problems being faced in that. I think the the overall yeah. trend, obviously, uh, of looking at these issues are obviously is is appropriate. 
Uh, having said that, uh, mm. whether to go with a composition scheme alone should solve it clearly no, and and maybe a little lower rate mm. uh, may uh, may help on a generic basis with I with uh, with ITC. Okay, uh, you know, let's just talk about the revenue situation. And Pratik, uh, uh, let me put that point across uh, to you because we discussed this with uh, Rohan Shah and Money yesterday. Now, in terms of the asking run rate, which is in excess of 1 lakh crore rupees a month, we're nowhere close to that. We're still edging closer to the 95, 96. And if you then uh, do away with the refunds as well as the uh, compensation, we're in the 80,000 crore rupee ballpark. Uh, so the, the worry then is that will they be able to offset uh, the shortfall on the indirect tax side through the direct tax collection or, of course, by way of an interim dividend uh, from the Reserve Bank of India, etc. That's a separate question altogether. But the fact that uh, a, a year and a half on, we're still not hitting the asking run rate when it comes to revenue in light of further rationalization now. I think these two are unrelated questions, uh, unrelated issues to my mind. I think by having a higher rate of uh, uh, tax, you can't collect more revenue. I mean, world over, it has it is now proven fact that indirect tax rates, if they are moderate, it increases compliances, it reduces tax evasion, and uh, you know consumption is more, and you collect more tax. So therefore, I think there is definitely a case of reduction from 28 to 18. And there are only 35, 40 items mm. left, and I think few of them will will continue to be there, like tobacco and luxury cars, etc. So I think there is definitely yeah. a case, and I don't yeah. think if you keep cement out, I don't think the revenue implication for the government would be would be huge. The the point uh, on on tax collection uh, le I mean, is related more to tax evasion, and there is still a uh, you know a large component mm. of the. Uh, of the business uh, industries, which is not paying tax, is not part of the organized uh, segment. Uh, recently, member budget uh, mm. made a statement that from April to November, the government has unearthed 12,000 crore of tax evasion. And that is when the data analytics yeah. and, and uh, tax administration is not, not, not tight enough. So I think that's the area which we need to focus on. Uh, you know, the e-way bills have been introduced, but uh, we have heard that a lot of uh, sort of uh, transactions still happening without uh, e-way bills. The same e-way bills have been used multiple times, uh, uh, you know, in that 24 hours, which is allowed for... Yeah. Uh, Pratik, just, just one second. Just a second. We've got the we've got the Puducherry finance minister speaking. Let's just listen to what he has to say. It's come down to 12% and 5%. Because these are all common man concerns. Today or today? Today. 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 The original demand by the Congress party, the original demand by the Congress party that the, all the goods should come under 18 and below. Now the government has come down, which we have been raising because they accept the, 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 the goods which are luxury goods. All other items should come at 18 and below, which has been now agreed by the government, the GST Council. In, in fact, except about it's a lot of Okay, I'm not sure what he was saying, but our reporter seems to suggest that the GST Council has recommended changes in rates of 33 items from 28% to 18%. Let's just replay. We'll try and replay that uh, soundbite for you. But that was the Puducherry Finance Minister, V. Narayan Sami, saying that the GST Council has recommended changing rates of 33 items from 28% to 18%. Remember, there are 35 items in the 28% uh, bracket. I don't think that that can be accurate because... Uh, uh, at least a bunch of them, at least half a dozen of them fall in the sin goods and the luxury category. So we may need, need to recheck that uh, uh, because I don't believe that it can be 33 items coming down from 28 to 18%. So we'll recheck that. But, uh, uh, but uh, sorry, Pratika, I had interrupted you. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, so what I'm saying was that uh, I think it's good news if 28% is coming down to 18. I mean, whether it's 33 or, or 30, that we'll have to see. Uh, but what I'm saying was that uh, by decreasing the tax rate, you will not reduce the tax collection. You have seen that happening in November 17, where 100 odd items uh, were reduced, uh, the rate was reduced. Then in July 18, uh, where most of the consumer durables, uh, the rates were reduced. 
and you haven't seen a drop in tax collections, right? It's, it's maintained around 95 to 97,000 crores now for the last three, four months. So I think tax administration is one part. And I, I think this kind of composition and things like that, if you complicate it further, then then those are the precise things yeah. that leads to <clears throat> tax evasion. And that's something which GST Council should stay away from. Uh, you know, and, and uh, the point being made there, Rohan Shah, by uh, the Puducherry Finance Minister, uh, seven items. Uh, so that's the correction, and that's what I expected, because it cannot be 33 items. There are only 35 left in the 28% bracket. Seven items uh, the GST Council has deliberated where the rate should be reduced from 28% to 18%. And money, we were talking about it yesterday, uh, things like uh, color TVs uh, uh, that are uh, larger than 20 centimeters and so 20 inches and so on and so forth. Uh, but Mr. Shah, you know, on the point that the Congress party is making that, look, we had stated very clearly that there should be a standard rate plus minus uh, one for sin goods and the other uh, for mass consumption items. And the government tied itself up in all kinds of knots by going into this multi-tier rate uh, 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 st structure. And now better sense has prevailed. There is some uh, legitimacy to that argument, is there not? I think... We need to see it from two perspectives, right? Uh, globally, if you sort of looked at, you know, nations who have just, let's say, two rate slabs, you do have many of them around the 16, 18% mark. Now, when we started out this whole endeavor, we had many complications, including what were the incumbent rates of tax and whatever was our taxing ambition in terms of the revenue we had to collect. In that scheme of things, it was sort of felt that, you know, coming through with the structure that we did, uh, which had, let's say, four, at least four principal uh, rates, was exactly the sort of way to go. And GST Council, which included the Congress, effectively, uh, you know, participated and took a decision. So I think from that perspective, uh, I don't think a critique would be justified. There was always the subtext mm. that you will move to 18 and get as much as possible into the bracket of 18. And periodically, there have been actions to yeah. sort of do that. I see this as a continuum. Uh, there may be a little bit of political background for Congress to sort of keep saying, we yes. told you this originally. But the council sits as once, it decides as one. And I think this gradual change... Yeah. Uh, was on the cards, it's happening. And even if it's seven items mm. now, as long as it's the correct seven items, uh, I think, you know, it's a move in the right direction. Uh, so from that perspective, I don't think anybody ever had the perfect script. Uh, in hindsight, we can say we had some better sure. views than you. Uh, but these were collective decisions, yeah. and I yes. think they've taken us forward. We should respect that. Oh, absolutely. They've all been collective decisions. In fact, not a single decision in the GST Council has been voted upon. They've all been unanimous decisions. And the Puducherry Finance Minister saying that seven items where the reduction from 28% to 18% has been discussed, and these are part of the fitment panel recommendations largely in the consumer category. These were approved by the GST Council. He hasn't revealed which those items are. But uh, Mani, would you like to take a stab at which these items could be uh, that the Puducherry Finance Minister has referring to? Uh, I think a couple of items would be fairly obvious, you know, including what we discussed earlier. Uh, dishwashers and air conditioners would be top of the mind, including color televisions exceeding 20 inches. There are also products like video games, which mm. are classified at 28% now, which ideally should come down. Because if these four items come down to 18, then we have the entire consumer electronic sector in 18. These are the only four items which are there. Yeah, yeah and I forgot DSLR cameras as well. In addition to that, out of the seven, you know, I would go to say that they might consider tires and tubes, which are today at 28. They might also consider mm. cement, mm. which remains a contentious uh, sector, because even in the past, cement has always been taxed on a combination of a specific rate and an ad valorem mm. rate. So the mechanics in terms of reducing mm. duty on cement may not be only a function of the revenue collection. It could be larger issues which the government is aware yeah. of. So considering this, I would say that seven items or eight times items moving down uh, is very good. Just one statistics that I wanted to mention. In the previous eight months of last year, yeah. when GST rates were relatively higher, the average per month collection was around mm. 89,000 crores. And during the current fiscal in the yeah. eight months that have happened, despite the fact that there has been a steep right. reduction on virtually every item, 
the average is around 95,000 crores. Mm. So this demonstrates the fact there is already right. empirical evidence of the fact that when you reduce the tax rates, the collection do not mm. go down. The tax base yeah. expands not only from a GST perspective, also That's from right. an income tax perspective. Absolutely, and that is being borne out by the numbers. That's a Puducherry finance minister speaking. Uh, total 33 items that the GST, uh, where the GST rate is 28% of the 33, 7 paired to 18% and 26 Okay, well, there's some confusion here still. So let's uh, let's revisit that with uh, the Puducherry Finance Minister in just a second. But let me go back across now to uh, to Uday. Uh, Uday, you know, one of the issues with respect to compliance was that new uh, simplified returns filing. And our understanding is that that's unlikely to be taken up by the council today. It's not part of the agenda. Uh, also, that the government is not particularly not particularly keen to sort of take that forward uh, yet uh, because they want to do a sort of large-scale pilot and ensure that the back end is fully operational and geared up uh, before they roll it out. Uh, your quick comment on the return simplification process? I think the government has learned uh, from the past experience. I think the government, uh, I think the government taking time to stabilize the, the back end, to educate people, to, to get uh, a better uh, workflow around the existing compliances, I think, uh, I think is again good. Uh, uh, there was no point in rushing through and changing, uh, changing an existing system. Uh, I mean, even though it might have uh, uh, possibly bettered some of the processes. The critical element to my mind still is that uh, adequate amount of consultations related to the simplified uh, uh, simplified workflows uh, is required. And I hope that the government keeps on engaging with the industry on that front. Uh, to my mind, there is another mm. uh, joker in the pack uh, that uh, we all need to be aware of is, uh, is what the courts are going to kind of hold on a number of issues that are already mm. in, uh, in, in the court to decide related to amendment of returns, this, uh, relation to availment of credits, the timing of the availment of credits, and mm. the ability of, of legislation to, on its own, suo moto, lapse credits, and so on and so forth. Uh, to my mind, again, mm. that's also going to uh, play some amount of role in the simplification. And it's good that it's it that time okay. is taken to stabilize the existing setup. Uh, it's 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 really really encouraging. 